wonderful. I believe by the special grace of God that you are having a wonderful time so far. And by the time this convention is over, your life will be filled with wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we honor you, we magnify you, we exalt you, because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the El Shaddai, you are the Ancient of Days, you are the Balm of Gilead. We thank you for giving us the power to be called your sons. And by virtue of being your children, we are joint heirs with Christ. For that, we are eternally grateful. We give you all the glory, Lord. Please accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go into your word very soon, Lord, we ask that the entrance of your word will shed light. We ask, O oh Lord Almighty, that you will speak to us. You will come down to our level and reach us wherever we are. And we pray, Lord Almighty, that by virtue of your word, our lives will never remain the same. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let those who believe that our Father in heaven, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, is their own Father, let them jump up and shout a powerful hallelujah. I've been asked to speak on the topic, Wonders of Growing in Christ. Wonders of Growing in Christ. If you open your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. I read from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, listen carefully. For I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. They are for signs and wonders that will occur in the land from the Lord of hosts who dwells on Mount Zion. I hereby decree for every child of God listening to me wherever you are located in the name of the Lord of hosts you shall begin to manifest signs and wonders. If you believe you are the one God is speaking to, let your amen overshadow that of your siblings. I want you to take note, my sons and daughters in the Lord, that it is impossible to spell wonderful without spelling wonder. It is impossible to spell wonderful without spelling wonder. Therefore, it is impossible and it cannot happen for wonders to take place without God's children being involved. So therefore, I stand on this highly exalted altar and I hereby decree and declare in the name of the Most High God that every one of you children of God in the redeemed Christian church of God, you shall manifest signs and wonders from now on, all the days of your lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Which means that in your schools, you shall be for signs and wonders. In your family, you shall be for signs and wonders. In your society, you shall be for signs and wonders. In your generation, you shall be for signs and wonders. If you believe so, jump up, shake one leg, shout a powerful hallelujah. So, therefore, you ask the question, what are wonders? I'm glad you asked. What are wonders? When you read the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Book of Genesis, chapter 18. Genesis, chapter 18, from verses 9 to 14. You will read of a father and mother who were late in their years. In their 80s, in their 90s, until they came into the season of wonders. Until wonderful himself visited them. And wonderful spoke concerning Mama Sarah. And said, about this time next year, when I return to you according to the time of life, you shall no longer be barren, but you shall be fruitful. And a wonder would have taken place in your family. And the Bible says, Sarah laughed. 
because she could not see it happening to her. She had already written herself off. She could not see what God could see. That it is not over unless God has said it is over. And the Lord Almighty himself who is named Wonderful said, why did you laugh? Is it too hard for the Lord to do? And Sarah denied and said, I did not laugh, Lord. But the Lord said, you did laugh. But regardless of your lack of faith, regardless of your laughter in this day, regardless of your unbelief, by this time next year, there shall be shouts of wonder in your household. Can I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice? Listening to me wherever you are located. Because you are part and parcel of this year's convention. By the time we return for next year's convention, when people see you, they will open their mouths in amazement. If you believe you are the one God is speaking to, let God hear your amen loud and clear. What are wonders, you ask? In Genesis chapter 43 from verses 1 to 33. Genesis chapter 43. Genesis chapter 43 from verses 1 to 33. It's a story of a young adult, a teenager, a young man that we all know named Joseph. God gave him mighty dreams, wonderful dreams, dreams that nobody else could believe. But it did not stop God. As a result of those dreams, his brother sold him to slavery. But they did not know that with their own hands, they were pushing him towards the fulfillment of those dreams. By the time the brothers came, because they were looking for something to eat, and they had an encounter with this teenager that they had sold, that they thought was dead, that they thought his dreams was dead. By the time they had an encounter with him years later, the Bible says when they sat down in verse 33, and he was feeding them in his palace, when they were feasting on plates made of gold, when they were sitting on cushions that they have never sat before, when they were sitting in an air-conditioned room instead of fan, they looked at themselves in wonder. Do you know that it is often the case when a young boy or a young girl has a dream and shares it with his family and shares it with his brothers and sisters and shares it with those who he thinks will be able to bring that dream to fulfillment. They often want to kill that dream. But they had no idea that with their own hands, they were pushing him to the fulfillment of that dream. Can I pray for every child, every boy, every girl listening to me wherever you are, who has big dreams that God has placed in them, that they are going to achieve great things in their generation. I have come with good news for you, and I have come with bad news for all your enemies. In the name of the Lord of hosts, Right under their noses, your dreams shall be fulfilled. In a short matter of time, you can be, you become a source of wonder. In your own generation, you shall become a source of wonder. If you believe you are the one God is speaking to, let God hear your amen loud and clear. Wonders, by definition, are happenings of surprise mingled with admiration caused by Something beautiful, something unexpected, something unfamiliar, something inexplicable. It cannot be explained. That is what wonders are. So as a result, when wonders happen, people open their mouths and they say, wow. They say, wow. When did that happen? Meaning they did not expect you. To ever experience such a thing. Because where they left you is where they expected to come and meet you. But by the time they return and they see you elevated, they see that your level has changed. They see that status has changed. They open their mouths and they say, wow, how did it happen? When it happens, they open their mouths and they say, wow, how does that exist? At this junction, you will see some videos playing on the screen showing you the wonders of God at work in nature and amongst young adults and teenagers and children. These are things that God is getting ready to do through you that will make people open their mouths and say, wow. 
So therefore, when people see something wonderful take place in America or in Europe or the rest of the world, they often open their mouths and they say, wait, what? What happened? They say, how? When? But then you open your mouth because they will have no option but to ask you, my brother, my sister, who did it? Then your own response will be Jesus. To which they will exclaim, oh my God. And you all shout, wow. That was the story and testimony of a young boy like yourself listening to me. In the book of Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. This was a young boy who was located at a beautiful location. But he was in an ugly situation. That was not the way he started life. When the father and mother met, they had big plans that once they give birth to their son, at the age of one, when he's able to stand, they will buy him a bicycle when he's able to ride a bicycle. When he's able to drive, they will buy him a car. When he's old enough, they will hand over the business to him. But at the age when he was meant to start standing, he was not standing. The age when he should be walking, he was not walking. The age when he should be running, he was not running. And all of a sudden, the parents realized that we have entered a terrible situation. They spent all that they had from doctor to doctor, from nation to nation, today India, tomorrow China, next tomorrow Dubai. But nothing came out of it until they ran out of their, exp all their money, they ran out of it. They could no longer carry him and back him like a baby because he was getting bigger. He was growing bigger. But yet, he had an impediment. So they carried him to the beautiful gate. And they said, perhaps, he can be making money to take care of himself here. And they abandoned him there. But on a day like today, a season like this season, a time like this time, he had an encounter with a man of God that was sent. And when that man of God had that encounter with him, he simply spoke a word into his life. And that young man became a source of wonder before the day entered. Can I pray for all you children of the Most High God whose destinies have been impeded, whose destinies are stagnated, whose destinies have been stopped in the tracks. I hereby decree and declare by virtue of the anointing of God upon my life, in the name of the Lord of hosts, anything stopping you from being a wonder, this very hour, it shall be eliminated. If you believe you are the one God is speaking to, let God hear your amen loud and clear. This young man, before the service was over, the Bible says he got up, leaping, bouncing, walking with swag, entered into the church, and all the fine girls in the church all of a sudden noticed him. Ah, uh ah, -uh, who is he? Where has he been all our lives? They were looking. Is it him? Yes, it is him. So people were saying, no, it's not him. They did not know something wonderful just happened in his life. And all of a sudden, his level changed. Can I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice, wherever you are? Before this service is over, a miracle that will make you a source of wonder. God shall perform it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So now that we know what wonder is, you now ask the question, what is growing? Because the topic before us is growing or the wonders of growing in Christ. So what is growing, you ask? Luke chapter 1 verse 80. Luke chapter 1 verse 80 tells us concerning John the Baptist that the child continued to grow and to become strong in spirit. And he lived in the desert until the day of his public appearance to Israel as John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Messiah. You may be going through a wilderness experience right now. Nobody may know who you are. Nobody may know the family you come out from. But I have come here with good news for you today. In the name of the Lord of hosts. By the time this convention is over, the world will hear of you. If you believe you are the one God is speaking to, let him hear your amen loud and clear. In Luke chapter 2 verses 39 to 40. 
Luke chapter 2 verses 39 to 40. It says concerning the Lord Jesus Christ that when they had done everything in connection with his birth according to the law of the Lord, his parents, his earthly parents, went back to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child Jesus grew and he continued to grow and he became strong in spirit and he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. So therefore, if you are looking for the definition of growing or growth, growing is a process of progress and development that leads to increase in stature. In other words, your size, your weight, your height. It leads to increase in wisdom, in favor, and in grace. That is the type of growing we're talking about. And I want you to know, as I'm sure many of you know by now, that growth takes place physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Growth takes place physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, Apostle Paul said, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I grew up, I did away with childish things. So growth is a process. So when you're talking about growth physically, it usually takes place from birth. And you begin to grow till a certain age. The universal age that your growth stops is usually around the age of 20. When you live your teenage years, 19, you are still growing a little bit. But by the age of 10, 20, you would have finished growing and you enter from teenagehood into young adulthood. Change or growth can take place emotionally. And this often takes place usually to the age of 25. That's why you will find that at the age of 25, most people are considered matured enough to get married because their emotional growth should have reached its peak. Change or growth can take place mentally. And this usually happens from the moment you're born and you begin to go to school and you're getting your education. Nursery, primary, secondary, university, first degree, second degree. And if you're serious, by the age of 30, you should have your PhD. That's why it is universally accepted that mentally our growth is usually at its peak at the age of 30. Spiritually, however, growth has no end. It has no limit except you allow the devil in. That is the only hindrance to your spiritual growth. Can I tell you a short story about myself? It's an embarrassing story. When I was a teenager like you, I remember mommy went to London and when she came back, she bought me a pair of chinos. And chinos was raining in those days. From Max and Spencer, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. <laughs> chinos from London. And the chinos fit me very well. All the girls in school, don't mention it to mommy. All the girls in church, they were checking me out because of the chinos. So, I went to God in prayer. And I said, God, I was about 15 years old. I said, God, I don't want to outgrow these chinos. Just keep me at this height so that I can be constantly wearing these chinos. How stupid was I? I prayed that prayer. And you know God hears the prayer of little children. Because he says, suffer not little children to come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do you know from my mouth to God's ears, God heard my prayer. From the age of 15, I did not grow taller. All of the things that I could have been borrowing from daddy today, if I was his height, I cannot do that. All of the shoes that I could have been borrowing from daddy if I was in shoe size, I can no longer do that. Why? Because I prayed a stupid prayer that stunted my growth. Can I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice this hour? What you will open your mouth to ask God for that will stunt your growth permanently. The most high God will not allow you to ask for it. 
If you believe you are the one God is speaking to, let him hear your amen loud and clear. So if you want to grow, which is the topic before us, there is a Bible rhyme, a Sunday school rhyme that they taught us in Sunday school, which is read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. My brothers and sisters, my sons and daughters in the Lord, there's no other way for you to grow in Christ and experience the wonders of growing in Christ if you are not feeding on the Bible. What makes you grow is the food you eat. When you look at us in Nigeria, we grow thick because most of our diet is carbohydrate rich. But when you look at the same age of those in America, at the age of 12, they are already six foot. Age of 15, seven foot. Why? Because all they eat is fertilizer. Everything in their food is fertilizer designed to make them grow. And I'm not abusing them. But it is what you feed on that determines your growth. If you are not feeding on the word of God and you are feeding on pornography, feeding on Big Brother Niger, feeding on all nonsense that is all over there, then that is what will determine how you grow. You want to grow and experience the wonders of growing in Christ, you need to feed on the Bible. That's why David, a young man, a teenager, wrote in his teenage years in Psalm 122 verse 1. Psalm 122 verse 1. He said, when I was a child, as a teenager, I was always glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And then he did not stop there. He also mentioned in Psalm 119 verses 9 to 11. Psalm 119 verses 9 to 11. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping watch on himself. According to God's word. Conforming his life to God's precepts. He says, for me with all my heart I have sought you. Inquiring of you and longing for you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Neither through ignorance nor by willful disobedience. For your words have I treasured and stored in my heart. That I may not sin against you. So now that we know what wonder is, now that we know what growing is, you now ask a final question. Sir, who is this Christ that we should have an experience of wonders of growing in him? Who is this Christ? I'm glad you asked. According to the book of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 18. Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 18. This Christ was a child of wonder. When he was coming into this world, his announcement caused wonder and amazement. When you read verse 15 and verse 18, the Bible says, all those who heard of his coming, of his arrival, of his birth, they all opened their mouths in wonder and amazement. Which means that if you grow in Christ... You become a source of wonder to anybody who comes across you. Can I pray for you, my dear son, my dear daughter? Wherever you are located, in your environment, in your school, in your neighborhood, anytime people come in contact with you, they will see the signs of wonders of God upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Who is this Christ? Number two, he was a child designed for signs. A child designed for signs. In Luke chapter 2 verses 33 to 34. Luke chapter 2 verses 33 to 34. Bible says, And his earthly father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Listen carefully. This child is appointed and destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel. And especially for a sign. It was a child for signs. Who is this Christ? As I begin to round up. It was a child destined for great things. Great and mighty things. A child destined for great and mighty things. According to Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. says, for unto us a child shall be born. 
To us a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and there shall be no end to the increase, the growing, the growth of his government and of peace. And he shall rule on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time forward and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Do you know when you are growing in Christ, one of the wonders that you will experience is that you will begin to rule. You will begin to have dominion. So I hereby decree concerning those of you who are listening to me, in your class you shall be number one. Amongst your set you shall be number one. In your generation you shall be number one. If you believe so, let God hear your amen loud and clear. And finally, who is this Christ? He was a child that was brought into this world to bring salvation to the entire world. According to Luke chapter 2 verses 9 to 11. Luke chapter 2 verses 9 to 11. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. And the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will be for all the people. For this day in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. If you want to experience the wonder of growing in Christ, you are not too young to witness. You are not too young to share the gospel with your friends, with your neighbors, with your classmates, with your family members, with all those around you. Because as a child of God, as a teenager in the redeemed Christian church of God, you were born to be the savior of your generation. So wherever you are, rise to your feet and talk to God right now and say, Father, I know you brought me into this world for a purpose, to be a wonder, to be a sign, to be for greatness, and to be a salvation to my generation. Grant me the grace to fulfill all of this. So that I will not disappoint you. I will not disappoint myself. I will not disappoint my generation. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. For every prayer you have put before God this hour, I hereby decree it shall answer by fire. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you all and see you next time. Once again, when people see you, they will ask you this question. Who did it? And your response will be, Jesus. Oh my God. Wow.